Okay, and so we're going to start moving into the races that uh, I'm sure you're all here to see. Uh, so uh, Mr. Walker is going to post questions to these candidates. We're going to start with the United States Senate. Uh, so if there are any candidates here for the U.S. Senate, please make your way to the stage. Right now, as you can see in Washington, there is a lot of bickering back and forth between who is right and who has more integrity than who else. And I think what we need to do is we need to really look at and elect people that are talking about how to protect and preserve our liberties that we have. You need to elect someone that believes that you have the right to defend yourself by any means necessary, period. That means whatever. That means when it comes to firearms, if you can afford it, buy it. Second of all, you need to look at someone that is going to stop the endless wars that we have that continuously send our soldiers into wars specifically regarding resources and regime change. That means you end those wars and you bring our individuals home. And then when they get home, you take care of them. Am I at a time? Lord have mercy, a minute goes by fast. Well, don't worry, we're gonna have lots of questions. So, uh, and the next candidate is from the Democratic primary, it's uh, Victor Harris. Hello, my name's Victor Harris. Um, I'm a 34 year veteran. Still serving, I'm colonel in the United States Reserves. I'm a black member of the NRA. I'm also a Texas Democrat. I'm the most qualified of all candidates on any party. Um, served under foreign administrations, executing foreign policy. <coughs> served in three different combat theaters. Served in the Middle East at least seven tours. Ger in uh, Germany and Europe, Central America, Korea. I'll tell you this because I'll tell you that it's not just a form of education that makes me different, it's my experiences. I have a bachelor's degree in history from uh, St. Mary's University, a master's degree in social and public policy from Georgetown University, a master's degree in national security and, social and strategic studies from the Naval War College, and I'm part of the intelligence community. I have a master's in science, technology, and information operations and cyber intelligence and in finishing my Army War College a degree in strategic studies, which focuses on national um, security agency. I'll tell you this because I only have a minute. I think one of the big issues that I'd like to address in the um, Senate is immigration, health care, education, and gun ownership. My ideas on gun ownership are completely different than any other candidate you'll see out there. They're completely different. I, thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, let's start off with the uh, first question here from Mr. McKenna. Mr. McKenna, what's your position on term limits? And uh, by the way, since I'm in charge now as the moderator, let's shut that door or ask those folks to touch you down a little bit. Yeah. Somebody needs to walk in here and tell them to quiet down a little bit. Please, a little bit. We, we told you all the human rights.
environment with a iron fist. <laughs> I'm also a trial lawyer, and first thing I do is take control of the court. And you're Navy. Navy. And I am Navy. That's right. So I'm for term limits. Better than that. Some reason. Go ahead, Mr. McKenna. So I'm for term limits, but I also think that every time there's an election, you have the opportunity to end that person's term in office. So that was within your capacity as a voter to completely end their term and the term limit is over. The question is, do we need to have an actual mechanism in place to where those individuals can only serve a certain amount of terms? And I, I think that's a good thing. And personally, because I'm a third party ticket, it's a little bit harder to run against an incumbent. But at the same time, I think it starts getting a little bit of the money out of politics. When someone is in Washington or in Austin or, or even in the city council or county commissioner for years and years on time. So just take that into account. Mr. Harris, what do you think? So, all right. I am definitely support term limits. I, uh, I'm not running for the U.S. Senate because I want to be a senator. I'm running because I have to, because I'm tired of what's up there right now, what's on the way up there if, if the Democrats win as well. Um, I'm different than the rest of the Democrats in the party. I, I identify as a Texas Democrat, because Texas Democrats have different values than California and New York. And, and you'll, if you look at my gun policies, you'll see that. But um, I expect to serve one term, and if I'm doing the job right, I'll ask for a second term, no more. But if I'm not doing the job right in the first term, I'm stepping away and let somebody who can do the job do the job. I think that's the way it should be. That's not how it is now. I think people stay in there, they get money, they get happy, they get greedy, and they keep going for the same job over and over again because they don't want to move and change. Change is important. Thank you. Mr. McKinnon, let's uh, start with you again and tell us how you would have voted in the impeachment trial that just concluded against our president. You really want to bring that up, don't you? I did. Uh, I'm briefly. So, I would have actually voted for there to be further witnesses and documentation because I think that it would have either completely exonerated Donald Trump or would not have. And I think that's important. I think it's important for us as individuals to know that. Should have done it in the House. Well, they, might, they maybe should have done it in the House, but when they don't subpoena and they can't get those people to come in, that's, that's what happens. I, I, think it's, I think it is our duty when we're subpoenaed to go to the House and to, get, to answer the questions that we're asked. And I don't think you should, look, if I, get, if I have to go to court in a, in a, here, in, here in Randall or Carter County, they don't just let me say I don't want to come. So I think it's important that we know what's happening. I think, it, I think it, is, it is really hard to vote a yes or no on whether to impeach Donald Trump when you do not have all of the information in front of you, period. Mr. Harris, what do you think? First of all, it's a political process. We didn't, we're not going to get the truth. We're going to get a political answer, which is what we got. And first of all, the impeachment, uh, the House doesn't do a trial. They just gather the evidence. The Senate does the trial. And the trial is where you have your witnesses. I would like to have seen witnesses in the, the actual trial. But I think understand that a lot of the senators felt that the House managers made, they did the case, that he did do those things. But they didn't think that they, they amounted to, to him being removed. And I completely agree. I think that that was, a, as a Democrat, that that was a bad strategic move. Because you never want to give your opposition the last, last move. And that's what they did, and that's why they lost so badly. What they should have done is just to, admonished him in the House and ended it there and made him look bad if that's what the intent was. And I think we all know that that was the intent from the beginning going back almost four years. Mr. Harris, let's uh, go on to the next question. We'll start with you this time. Okay. Uh, what's your position on illegal immigration? What would you suggest we do? I think we have a problem. We've had a problem since before, since before Clinton. And what we need to do is we need, we need immigrants. And I don't think there's a question about that. The fertility rate of the United States is 1.7. In order to maintain our current economy, we need a 2.1 fertility rate. Japan's getting ready to take a dive because their population's getting old. 
China because of one child left, uh, one child rule. In uh, 2020, 2030, 2035, they're going to start taking a dive. So these immigrants, we need them. So we need to create the, a process to account for them. I support a wall. I support a partial wall in the desert area where we find 200, 250 people, mostly women and children, dead every year. I think if we had a highway that was killing that many people, we would get up in arms about it. So we put a wall. Thank you. I, I'm not trying to be uh, just too, too abrupt with you guys, but we need to wrap things, get a little, get a little tighter on our time. Uh, what do you think, Mr. McKinley? We have to have immigration reform. When you have individuals that are seeking asylum or individuals that are doing the best that they can for their families and they are put into cages and there's a better way to do that. Part of the problem is we do not have enough judges, we do not have enough um, workers at the border and in those facilities to move those cases through the courts in a timely fashion. So if you think that it's if you think that it's okay for us to just close the border, I, I think you really need to think about the way the, the economy works and the way things that happen. Um, we, just here in Texas, we, we have to have a more open, opening, an, a more open immigration policy. Not necessarily an open borders, but a more open immigration policy. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, there were quite a few uh, questions from uh, the audience, and we greatly appreciate that. Almost all of them have to do with gun ownership. Who wants to take it first? Are you going to give me one in a minute? Uh, no, you're on. You're all right. We need to address <laughs> Go. We need to address three things. Uh, people who obey the laws, people who don't obey the laws, and adolescents. Adolescents. We need mental health support. We need mental health support from grade school to high school. We need to build resiliency in these children. Not only will it help with uh, guns at schools, but as adults and suicides. That's very important. That's, you have to change the culture. And that's what we do with health, mental health at school. All right, people who don't obey the law. We need to cover those, those um, we need to have the um, universal background check. But what I would say is instead of at the point of sale, we do that before that point. We do uh, provide licensing or grants for people who allow them to purchase weapons so that that covers all the loopholes that everybody's concerned about, but we also need red flag laws and they need to be a little bit uh, stringent on those things because it does protect people. Uh, the third thing is for law-abiding citizens, reciprocity. We need reciprocity. If we're going to have universal background checks and everybody, we need reciprocity across all states. All right, thank you, sir. Mr. Uh, McKenna. So basically, it just says it shall not be infringed, period. Okay, that's it. There, there's no more discussion. If, 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 if you do something um, where you infringe upon somebody else's rights and you use a far, firearm, that, that's what the police are for, that's what to arrest you, and that's what you are to go through the court system. Um, red flag laws mean that Anybody who doesn't like me can simply just report me for any reason, and they can send somebody, and that to me screams of um, socialism, communism, Nazi Germany, and I'm not for that. I, I, can't, I can't get behind our, our actual gun rights being infringed in any way possible. And I think Trump was wrong to... to Get, to make bump stocks, il st st bump stocks il illegal. I'll just say that. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, I know you guys have come in from, uh, from a ways. We really appreciate both of you showing up. Got to give, uh, give each of you a minute to close the remarks. I'll start. Right? Yeah. All right. Very fair. All right. Once again, thanks for having me. Um, I, I told you about my qualifications, but uh, there's, I mean, there's plenty of other things we discuss, and, and you would learn more about me. I strictly believe in keeping taxes low and liberties high. I believe in life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I do not believe that we should be able to use religion to discriminate against other people. And that's about it. Uh, I want to thank um, the Legion here and the um, Emerald Reporter for. Ha 
Pioneer for having us. I just want to say that in November, you're going to have a very important decision to make of the makeup of the Senate of the United States as well as the House. And it's very important that you choose people that have integrity, to choose people that are on the side of the issues that are important to you. And that may be me, and it may not be me. And you may say, I can, believe, I can agree with you on 80%, Carrie, but not 20%. What I want is I want the government out of your bedroom and out of your wallet, and I want you to be able to do whatever the hell you want to do as long as you're not infringing upon anyone else's liberties, period. And I'm Carrie McKinnon for the United States Senate of the great state of Texas.